Hey guys, welcome back. This week I'm bringing you another coloring book page and I'm going to attempt to paint in since the Alice in Wonderland video went so well. Um, I decided to do something a little bit different since Alice in Wonderland was so successful. I had a couple of people coming to me asking for something um, animated from the 80s or 90s and this was actually the first thing that came to my mind was Chippendale. So I figured they're colorful and we could do something fun with the background as well. Plus, they're cute. Who doesn't love Chippendale? So I figured we would start here, and since I've already figured out how to open the gouache, and most of my tubes are open by this point, we can go ahead and get a head start. Um, as always, if you want to color along or you want to give your own shot to trying the coloring page, there's going to be a link in the description that will take you to my Facebook art page. You can follow it and you can download it for free. All that I ask is that you go ahead and once you finish coloring it, you link back to me or you tag me in some way so that I can see what you've done. That way we're all kind of in this together and we're having fun doing everything, you know, together. That's the whole point of this. When I was doing this, um, my husband was actually pitching me several ideas. He tends to do that. He gets a little excited sometimes by my uh, suggestions. When uh, someone specifically requested something 80s or 90s, he kind of took the idea and ran with it. So it kind of developed into this whole little story with our, I think they're chipmunks. I'm not sure what they are. I don't remember. So I actually have a whole little adventure that I could go into with these guys. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, mostly because if I do decide to proceed with it, It'll actually make some really cute coloring pages and I'm going to save it and use it for that, just in case. But the one thing I noticed right away when I started painting Dale's shirt was that I was going to have a little bit of trouble if I tried to do more of this picture like I would an acrylic. I've never used acrylic paint before. I've only ever dabbled with watercolor painting and that that is it. I mean, I've maybe once painted a little statue I made with craft paint, which is totally different. And so I wasn't sure how to keep thicker paint on the brush without it getting streaky, without losing some of the vibrancy of the color. And I really struggled with it because my first instinct was to add water and to pick up more paint. But when I did that, it just came out uneven. And when I added more paint, the paper liked that less and less. I can't seem to wrap it around my head that Canson Mixed Media does not act as you would want it to with acrylic paint. It actually prefers lighter watercolor washes. And so you can, you'll notice here that for the chipmunks especially, and even with the collar of Dale's shirt, I was losing so much paint on the brush because I had dipped it into water that I had to go over it again. And I was trying to remind myself that, okay, clearly it's not going to work if I try to use it more as an opaque paint. I need to layer this. I need to just let the layer sit and dry and go over it again. That's the only way I'm going to get a crisp look. But unfortunately, sometimes I'm not very patient. And um, you can definitely see that in the chipmunks themselves with the color of their fur. I was trying to use the correct size brushes, but sometimes the brushes themselves were too big or too small. I was really struggling with finding that medium today, and I wasn't sure why. I didn't know if I had just tripped myself up by starting off wanting to do a different technique. I really wanted to learn to use gouache to its full potential, and so I was a little frustrated that I couldn't just, you know, lay paint down on my medium and just go at the paper like I wanted to. But it took a little patience, and I did eventually get the chipmunks to look better. I was pretty happy once I started using it as lighter washes, lighter washes. I, I could build up color, but you can't take it away, and it's really hard to fix once it's on there if you don't like it. I learned that very quickly with this one. And so, like, you'll see me applying watercolor techniques to Chip's jacket especially. I'm pretty sure that's probably one of the places it's most obvious, and his hands that are holding the map. Um, the, watercolor, the, the watercolor brush that I used was too big. And so, yeah, I had a nice amount of paint on there, but it was too much paint. I couldn't let that much paint just sit on top of the paper and pull there, or it was going to completely destroy it. And so I went through with a 
a clean brush, like a clean brush with just a little bit of water, wiped it off, and I picked up the excess paint called Lifting. And I relied on that a lot to try and get them to look decent, to try to get that nice dark look without it pulling on the paper, without it, you know, buckling anything. And it was just, I found that easier to do than to sit there and struggle with it and, and just go in super dark right away because I knew that was not an option with this Canson mixed media. It was just not going to happen. So I moved on to the background and I was wondering as I was looking at my now finished colorful chipmunks that I was very happy with, um, I started wondering if maybe I had made a mistake because I knew that was something that I did completely different with Alice. I did the background first. I worked my way down to the main characters and then it was like top to bottom. So I didn't have to worry about putting my hand in any paint. And I don't know why I didn't think of that in this one, but it, at the same time I know that I did have that thought because I was worried Chip and Dale are brown, especially Chip. He's He's got a lot of brown, so I was afraid of weighing down the image too much by having really dark figures in the center. And, and just having like seriously like faded or, or dark colors in the background. I wanted it to be vibrant and happy. And I was just afraid that if I didn't color them first, I wasn't going to have anything to base the rest of the picture off of. And I think that's just from my lack of confidence coloring anything in general. I do it so little that I needed something to anchor myself. And since they were the focal point, I started there. So I started uh, applying many of the same techniques I used for Alice onto the foliage and the flowers. I used um, primarily watercolor washes. I was much more comfortable that way than if I were to try and go in really heavy. And it handled it better. I feel like it was more um, whimsical with the colors of the grass and the flowers. I wanted to match Dale's shirt. I wanted the vines to have pops of color, but be a little more realistic, something you might actually see in a jungle. I was just having a lot of fun coloring that part. That part was much more relaxing to me than the characters themselves, and I think a lot of that has to do with the pressure that I was putting on myself to get the characters right. The characters have to look right in my mind, and so the rest of it can just look like whatever I want it to look like. And so I went crazy with it. I had like pinks and purples, a very, very purple flower that was not intentional, but it was still purple. And then it came to the far background. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with that. It needed to be colored, even though I was pretty content to leave it white. I felt like that was kind of a cop-out. And I didn't want it to be black because, again, I was afraid of really weighing down the image. I didn't want it to be brown because Chip and Dale are brown. And so I decided on maybe like a dark blue. A dark blue would give kind of the thought of somebody could look at it and assume it was a sky or, you know, in my mind, it was just more like really dark shadows far in the distance, something along those lines. You know, they're in thick underbrush, nice florals everywhere. So that stuff's going to be brighter because they're right next to it, but the rest of it can be dark. And I learned very quickly that dark colors are probably the most difficult colors to work with with gouache. Um, it, it fought me the entire time. It did not want to have a consistent color. I was trying to keep it out of the colors that I had already painted. And part of me wishes that I had just painted that first and painted everything else on top of it. But I mean, it's part of the learning process and I'm going to take that with me going forward for sure. So with that said, I am very happy with how it turned out. I think I accomplished what I wanted to. I definitely need someone to um, give me some advice on what you use for when you have gouache. Do you use illustration board? Is there a stronger paper that you use when you have this medium? What do you recommend as far as starting with your backgrounds first, your foreground first, your characters? What is your process? I would love to know other people's process or suggestions on how to get better because I want to keep working on this. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying gouache too much to give up on it, so I will do this until it kills me or until I run out. <laughs> so. I am definitely going to keep doing this and I'm going to have another video up next week. I'm actually very excited for next week's video, so I hope you guys will like this video. Guys, definitely subscribe. For now, I am going to leave you with Chip and Dale as they try to find their treasure and I hope to see you next week.